the International Space Station in Earth's low orbit is one of the world's most complex man-made objects ever to be created. So complex, it took the unification of 15 nations to construct, some of which were on the opposite side of the Cold War. Over recent years, these nations have shared a variety of encounters and have exchanged numerous amounts of knowledge, which is now leading to new discoveries every day, many of which are necessary to send humans beyond the moon and low Earth's orbit. However, just years ago in the 1950s, the US and the Soviet Union competed in an intense space race, where both nations attempted to grant themselves a military advantage and prove the other inferior. The governments believed military research could enter space and threaten the existence of the other. The Russians took the lead in 1957 through launching the first successful satellite, Sputnik. Yuri Gagarin, a Russian cosmonaut, just years later in 1961, became the first human being to achieve spaceflight. Alan Shepard, an American astronaut, did the same less than a month later. But this was only the beginning. That same month, President John F. Kennedy announced that the U.S. aimed to place a man on the moon by the end of the decade. to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because The task they are proved hard. difficult, with the first Apollo launch resulting in a tragedy that killed three American astronauts. But all hope wasn't lost. By 1969, the U.S. had done the unthinkable. They had successfully launched the Apollo 11 mission that brought astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon. In 1975, the space race finally ended, once both nations had made it to the moon. Later that year, Russian cosmonauts and American astronauts historically met in space in the first joint space docking. This marked the cooling of the tense relations between the USSR and the US that lasted over 10 years. Tensions continued to cool throughout the next decade. By 1991, the Soviet government lost its power in the Soviet Union, marking the end of the Cold War and giving rise to present-day Russia. However, the first space station, Salyut 1, was launched in 1971 during the Cold War. It was the work of the Soviet Union. Through the years of 1971 and 1991, the Soviet Union launched a total of seven space stations in the Salyut series. It wasn't until 1973 that the U.S. launched their first space station, called the Skylab. It remained in orbit for six years, from 1973 to 1979. In its time, it received three crews in 1973 and 1974. Mir, the most successful Soviet space station, was launched in 1986. It was here that the US and Russia once again met in space in 1994, from which Russia was able to draw research that would combine with research from the American Skylab to help the US, among many other nations, construct the International Space Station. President. Distinguished members of the Congress, honored guests and fellow citizens. Once again, in keeping with time-honored tradition, I have come to report to you on the State of the Union. Ten years before, on January 25th of 1984, President Ronald Reagan directed NASA to build an international space station in a State of the Union address. Roscosmos, the Russian Federal Space Agency, launched the first segment of the station on November 20th of 1998 on board the Proton rocket Zarya. The first U.S. component was launched on December 4th of the same year. The European Space Agency, also called ESA, joined in 2008 and brought 11 more nations into the effort. Japan Space Agency, also called the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, shortened to JAXA, joined just months later. Now the International Space Station was 15 nations strong. Together, these nations have advanced in many fields to the new perspective of the planet Earth and the unique environment around it so far unachievable on Earth itself. Through uniting their efforts, these nations have further explored fields such as engineering, human health, and Earth science. And, and I gotta say, overall, uh the astronauts and cosmonauts get along exceedingly well. We really have a lot of camaraderie there. It has taught humans from around the world how to construct, research, and live in space. 
In fact, humans have had a non-stop presence in space for 15 years due to the space station. Astronauts and cosmonauts work nearly non-stop on ISS to conduct experiments and research for the world below them. Maybe from the experiments we're doing today in space, down the road, 5, 10, or 15 years, we can improve our burning processes here on Earth for our cars or power One plants. of the most important necessities of life, food, is not present in space. In order to keep a steady food supply, it'd be highly helpful to have a garden in space to grow food. As a result, NASA has equipped the space station with its own space garden in the Veggie Hardware Validation Test, also called Veg-01. Spaceflight also calls for uniquely designed living quarters. With such a low limit on space, a ship's design must be extremely efficient. Astronauts may perform poorly in space if their environment is not suitable for humans to live for extended periods of time. The assessment of International Space Station Vehicle Habitability has worked to find how much space is required to house astronauts for long periods of time while in spaceflight. Communication delay also poses another obstacle for many of NASA's future plans, such as sending a manned mission to Mars. The Com Delay Assessment Investigation works with this problem. It has recorded the effects of communication delay with crews aboard ISS by having astronauts complete tasks while experiencing controlled communication delays. These results will be helpful in preparing the crews sent on long-distance space flights. In fact, messages can take as long as 12.5 seconds to travel between the Earth and its close neighbor, Mars. Astronauts must also ensure the safety of their spacecraft, without any urgent way to send parts necessary to repair any broken fragments of the ship. Astronauts could have to face death if their spacecraft is not fully operational. However, the 3D printing and zero-g technology demonstration verify that 3D printers are functional in space. This is the first step necessary in order to establish an on-demand machine shop in space, which would give astronauts access to nearly any part at any time that may need to be replaced. Due to the intense environment of space, astronauts on board the space station undergo many physical and psychological changes. The experiment journals helps to monitor and explore the changes in the astronaut's state of mind through reading and analyzing journals written by crew members. These findings have helped scientists further understand the effects of spaceflight. From astronaut experiences, scientists have learned that spaceflight causes changes in vision, balance, coordination, immunity to pathogens, and bone health. Through research on these matters, scientists have managed to more properly prepare humans to go into space. It is because of this research that NASA knows what kinds of food to have brought to the station, how crew members must exercise, and how to care for an astronaut who recently returned to Earth. Some of the, what we're doing up in space on the human body, I think, will have the greatest promise. We're trying to uh, minimize the muscle loss and bone loss for our astronauts in space. Uh, you know, if we can figure out, okay, how can we minimize bone loss and get at the mechanism of what causes bones to, to lose your, your calcium and how, how can you gain that calcium back, maybe we can use that for our senior citizens here with osteoporosis and also, you know, weakening other muscles as well. So some of that has great potential. The International Space Station is truly an amazing work of engineering which may have never been, been built if it weren't for the exchange of knowledge and experience between nations like the U.S. and Russia, who were the first to construct their own space stations. The encounters they and the other 13 nations shared allowed for the efficient and successful construction of the space station that is still in orbit today. It is in this space station that astronauts have been able to conduct research and demonstrations that have advanced our understanding of the known universe spaceflight and the effects it has on the human body. NASA even predicts that it may one day put a man on Mars. It will be an amazing technological achievement, but even more so a political achievement. And just working together, despite everything else that happens down on planet Earth, that that still goes on, that we're, we're still committed to space exploration together as a group. I think that'll be a great, great achievement of